Hello, this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Danilo from PeacefulAnarchism.com and Jeremy and Dave, the heel. So today we're going to discuss um, freedom of dissociation and freedom of association for business owners, uh, whether government should have the right to uh, intervene in, as to uh, which patrons uh, business owners should um, you know, be allowed to have or have not or, or not have. <laughs> uh, and then after that, we're going to try to go into what is volunteerism um, and a discussion on the, um, the principles of volunteerism. So, so I guess I'll start off. Um, I got into a conversation with a family member recently about uh, this, um, these business, uh, <laughs> I guess you can say morals, because my family member has a business and, um, and so she's pretty vocal about it. Um, but you know, I, I was basically saying how you know what's the problem with it with a, with a business that chooses, let's say, to not cater to blacks, Mexicans, you know, any kind of Hispanics, you know, Asians, doesn't matter, right? Only whites, let's say, for example. Um, like I think recently there was a um, there was a story about a baker that um, had uh, a patron come in and say, you know, please bake me a cake, and write on the cake. God hates fags, right? <laughs> and the business owner refused to do that. And I think, uh, you know, the guy sued him and everything. But, you know, th I think this brings up an interesting idea that, uh, you know, as individuals, we have the freedom of association of, you know, who you want to marry, who, who, you, who you want to have a relationship with, who you want to be friends with, who you don't want to be around, <laughs> right? You're, nobody's really forced to be around anybody, right? And so w if you become a business owner, are you not still just an individual with a business and do you not still have those same rights, right? I, I think that they go hand in hand. And once you start, once you start separating those things, you get into uh, you know, the murky water of uh, corporatism and uh, you know, fascism that is government, right? <laughs> when, when government takes a previously moral act and renders it immoral. All right, what, are your, what are your thoughts, Jeremy? Uh, <clears throat> Well, the uh, yeah, the case you were talking about, uh, I, I just recently heard about that too, and and that's the you know the the basically the, the slippery slope arg argument uh, from when the you know because now everybody thinks that this that th that's ridiculous. They shouldn't have to do you know most people would agree. Oh, you shouldn't have to do that. That's 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 horrible. Why would you want to put that you know on a on a cake? Um, and then don't understand why, and 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 don't understand why it's a problem that the business owner said no. But in the past couple of years, especially, there's been some cases uh, where the um, I think there was a photographer, um, and there was also I think there was also a bakery um, that had that tried to refuse service to uh, lesbian couples, I believe, that wanted to ha that were getting married and wanted to have a cake and or, or, for, or uh, a photography for their, their wedding. Uh, I don't remember exactly the cases, uh, but <clears throat> they refused and the, uh, the, the business owners refused the service. And of course, the, uh, these situations, the, the, the couples turned around and sued uh, for being discriminated against. And when that happened, most people cheered for it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and of course, because why, why should they... Well, why shouldn't they be allowed to have their their photographs taken, or why shouldn't they? And uh, the pro the problem is, and you know, so you have these two situations where both, uh, you know, both times somebody is being discriminated against. Uh, the difference is is an emotional one, um, which is usually the case uh, with our with our statist friends, um, where because you agree with one situation and not with another, you don't see that they're exactly the same. And, you know, I, I made the joke about the slippery slope uh, earlier. Um, but that, you know, this is, this is what happens if you, if you let government get involved and start and start dictating who is allowed uh, to use what business. And like you were saying, Danilo, you know, pretty much supersede the owner himself uh, or owners uh, into the decision-making process of, of who they do business with. And that is a, uh, that's always a problem, but 
you know, most people will only see it as a problem when it's when the person who is being allegedly discriminated against uh, is somebody that they agree with. Um, otherwise, it's 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 not a problem at all, and and people should be, you know. <laughs> and it's it's a it's a it's the contra it's the contradiction that they miss, uh, conveniently. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, that's what I think of when I, when I hear, when I think about this topic, you know, you and I had pre previously discussed it, uh, a couple of days ago, I think we were talking about it, uh, cause you told me the story about what happened with your family member. And, uh, it's just when government gets involved, they, you know, like you were saying, it's, they're trying, they're trying to basically legislate morality and, and that can never be done. And yet they still try because the people clamor for it because again if it's somebody they agree with and they think that they should be that they that they should ha be able to have the right to do or not do whatever they think they should be doing or not doing uh then th then people will champion it uh but when it's somebody they disagree with they could care less and and would ignore the the situation um even though they are again you know pretty much exactly the same um, and government just, when they try to legislate morality, they end up making it worse, um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, people are forced to, uh, business owners are forced to do business with, you know, people they don't want to, and for whatever reason, and you can, if the, if the person is actually bigoted or if, it, you know, in other case racist, um, you know, that's, that's on them and people want to force them to conform for the, you know, the ever, you know, whatever their, they believe their moral code is that should supersede everybody else. And, uh, it, it you know, you can never make everybody happy because somebody's always going to get slighted. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, to, to, to tie it, you know, they just, to tie it to the original topic about disassociation or association, um, forcing that is always inconveniencing somebody. Um, and why people shouldn't be able to, it's, you know, you, you think about the same situation. Do you, do you let just anybody into your home? Um, mm -hmm. you know, somebody you disagree with, with, for whatever reason, are you going to let them stay there? And, you know, no, most people would say, no, <laughs> of course. Um, why, why would you, um, why should you be any different in, in a business? You know, in, in instead of, going to government and demanding that they, you know, force somebody to, to provide a service that they, they are unwilling to for, for a myriad of reasons. They, um, you know, a simple boycott, uh, you know, that, that's the thing, you know, people think, oh, if, if the government doesn't get involved, then nothing will happen and these people will just get away with this. Just don't give them, don't, don't go to their, those, don't use their services. Don't, don't buy their products. Um, you know, that, that's what, if, if the market is allowed to work, that's what would happen. Um, but, uh, again, people don't see that because they, they don't, they can't see the contradictions. They can't see that asking government to fix a problem that they created in the first place, uh, will just continually make it worse. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I tend to take a, a different thought process on it. I tend to think, uh, you know, let's just take the 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 Christian owned um, bakery that refused to sell to homosexuals. Um, either those either those people that own that bakery shop own that that business, or they do not. And if you own something like like if I go buy a yo yo off the shelf and and pay for it and take it to the house, and I I just want to break that thing in half and throw it in the trash. Uh, I should be able to do that because I own it. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want, <clears throat> you know, it, l let's say if I don't want to, to me, it's like this, no shoes, no shirt, right? Plus whatever else I want to add to that. No one gets upset about the no shoes, no shirt. But if you add, you know, I don't want any Mexicans in here. Well, we're not looking at the the background here. Like what, what happened months and months ago? For them not to want Mexicans to come to their, I don't know, restaurant. Maybe like a gang of Mexicans just came in and robbed them blind or, or whatnot. You know, like you never know what, what the reason is for. And obviously with that one, it's religious beliefs. And either that person, you should respect that person's belief and they own their business or they do not. And they're at the whims of the state. And also I think it's very cowardly to use 
someone else to do to force someone into uh, i think it's really cowardly to use the gun of government essentially to force your ideals like if you believe something that heavily and, and, and you want that cake from that one shop go in there and demand it tell them you'll pay more I, find out a way to get it peacefully like or go down to the freaking Publix or whatnot and get a cake. They sell to everybody. <laughs> That's just the, the craziness of the look, look, like Jeremy said, a boycott. These people won't sell to everybody. I'm not shopping there. Tell your friends they're bigots. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Or open up a freaking pipe <coughs> cake shop right beside it. And right up there, we sell to everybody, regardless of what you stick your dick in. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> And if you're if you beat them out and put them out of business, hooray for you and society. Mm -hmm. But obviously, that thought never crosses their mind. They go, "Ooh, there ought to be a law for this. This is ridiculous." It's it's not. There ought to be a law. It's not a co <laughs> coherent thought. They they just think it's another case of oh, government will fix it. I don't want to fix it. I know there's a problem, but government will fix it. And that's a lot of the problem that's wrong with the society today. And they've been trained to do so because. If you're a government, you want people to see you as the only option for everything. Mm -hmm. If if they can fix it themselves, then they're not going to need you. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. And I'll pass it to Jeremy to close, or uh, not Jeremy, but D Danilo to close on this this topic. But uh, you know, it basically comes down to this: if you support fascism, which is that is fascism telling a, and I know I say that word a lot, but a lot of people don't realize that that's what they openly support. If you support a government telling a business what they can and can't do to keep their business open, that is fascism. Plain and simple. That's the, you can look it up. Google economic fascism. Look it up. So. Yeah, I was, uh, I was listening to a uh, Tom Woods podcast today and he, he mentioned a story of a, um, uh, a couple of black kids in in some public school that uh, you know were being like violent and like you know bullying other kids and and so they were suspended right and then Jesse Jackson comes on the scene and you know makes it all about race and he's like you know get these get these boys back into the school <laughs> you, know, you know completely violent kids right and uh, and it's just amazing how so many people turn um, simple situations and just twist it around to this, you know, warped idea of racism. You know, it's it's only about blacks. It's because he's black. That's why. <laughs> that's why they did it, right? But it's just so sad. Like, um, there's a there's a book. Uh, I have yet to read it by Walter Block on just on discrimination. I don't know if you, any of you guys have read it. <laughs> really, really thick book. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I can't wait to read it. But he talks all about you know like sexism and racism and all this kind of ridiculous concepts. And basically how, you know, we all discriminate in our lives. Every day you're discriminating. Whatever you choose to do in your life, you're going here because you're not, you don't want to go here. You're discriminating, <laughs> you know. So this idea of discrimination is just a, such a fantasy world concept. And, and then furthermore, to think that we could use the violence of government to solve it is <laughs> even, more, even more absurd. Um, and I think after... Uh, after slavery it was was ended, um, the, <laughs> the ended the yeah well after slavery ended maybe we'll say after it was over, uh, chain slavery, um, the the life of the black man was actually improving pretty rapidly in terms of you know employment and wealth and standard of living and things like that, and uh, until of course when the minimum wage laws <laughs> entered the scene, what, in like the 1930s, I think, or 1920s. And then you see a significant decline. The Fair Wages Act by uh, FDR. There you go. Significant decline in the life of the black person. and Because uh, I've told you guys about, I've told you guys, right? I can't remember if we said that on one podcast yeah. or not. I think you mentioned that during the first one. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite thing to tell um, African um, descendant people. <laughs> Black, black you people. Wanna, yeah, black people. Whatever you I was trying to be PC for a second. You know. No. This is the anti PC yeah, yeah. show. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You, you you ask a black person if they're in favor of minimum wage and they go, Yeah. And I go, You do realize that what what it was created for, it was to, to keep you subjugated. Like and they go, What? And then I tell them the whole story. I mean, if you want to listen to it, go back and listen to our first yeah. podcast again. And uh you can hear the whole story, but you know, 
it, it's yeah, that's another tool of ridiculousness right there. Yeah, yeah, and it's just it's just uh, you know kind of funny that people get so up in arms about these business owners who you know don't want to cater to certain individuals. But like you said, Jeremy, they're just hurting, or I don't know if Dave said it. They're just hurting those. They're just hurting their own business by doing that, right? They're they're limiting their options, yeah. right? And and not only are they limiting their options, but they're causing frustration and anger in the population that that you know want to cater to them that or they want to go to that business but they can't and so what do they do they tell their friends and they you know spread the word you know <laughs> what's going to happen to a business like that so you know reputation this is another you know great uh uh concept why free market anarchy is um is so powerful of a market force is reputation right you know you your reputation as a business owner will make or break you and uh, yeah, I'm sure Jeremy, you can you can share a little bit about that since you have your own business, right? Um, yes. You go you go mainly on word of mouth, like your your clients. Uh, my, well, my business uh, started out with uh, I, I advertised for two years, I think, and since then, you know, I'm in year ten now, and it has been pretty much word of mouth since then. So yeah, it's it it really is. Um, you know, I mean, in my field, but I'm sure in my, in most fields, it's the same way. It's you know, when when you provide a product or a service that is, you know, good quality at good prices and, you know, good customer service, people will continue to use you. And um, I agree. You know, if, if you do anything to anger your, your customer base, you risk losing them. So any business, cal any business decision you make has to, you know, there, you have to make a calculation and see, you know, the, the you know, the, the risk benefit, you know, risk benefit analysis. Um, and see what's gonna uh, what what's gonna lead to you, you know. To I mean, as, as harsh as it is to say, because most people get uh, offended, you know, the economic Ill illiterate. Um, but what the bottom line, you know, what, what's it gonna do to your bottom line? And decisions uh, to keep certain people out of your business or not provide service to these people uh, will, uh, you know, that will affect you in a certain way. Um, and you know, because people might boycott all the time. Um, you know, things happen. Um, you know, Chick Fil A was boycotted a couple of years ago because the owner came out with his stance on gay marriage, um, and it was. It obviously wasn't enough to take them down, um, but they they suffered because of it. Because plenty of people, their you know, business went up to a certain extent. Yes, they, they, but, that, their PR suffered. Yeah, but but. but it, not in their most of their stores are in the south, so <laughs> well, <laughs> their business went skyrocketed. Oh, <laughs> Depends on where but, you but are. It, but the, but I was talking about the principle of, but like you said, the yeah. PR, and that's you know that's that's a risk you have to take. And but you you and but people want the government, you know, like you were saying, Danilo, the people would rather have the government force you know force them to do it um, for the quick. Uh, for, you know, for the quick result rather than waiting for the, the boycott to take effect. And, you know, when you boycott any business, um, you, you know, they're, they'll start, start selling less product or, or, you know, providing less service and it will hurt them. And if the free market was allowed to operate the way it is designed to, uh, after a certain amount of time, the business owner would have to make a decision of whether that, uh, that loss was hurting them enough to where they either had to correct their position or... Uh, bow out altogether, um, but people are always looking for that quick fix. So they would rather go to government. And like you were saying, with the you know pointing the guns at them, uh, that's what the people don't realize. Um, the end result of all government action is having guns pointed at you if you continue to um, stand your ground and believe that you are morally correct. Because most of the situations come down to a moral issue where government is trying to legislate morality because that's what the people think they think think it can do uh, but instead they're actually you know making people go against their own moral code and uh, and if they continue to stand their ground because of their their belief in their moral code uh, the end result is somebody with a gun will be pointing it at you the solu government's solution to every problem is violence like that is their solution Oh, you're not going to do this? Well, we want you to do it. And if you don't, we're going to put you in a cage. If you resist that, we're going to kill you. So that's their answer to every question. Any question you think the government should do, all right, if you think the government should fix something, all right, think of how they're going to fix it. It's going to be through violence. Now, that's beat into kids 
me, you, Jeremy, it's beat into our heads that you do something bad, you get spanked for it, and that's a good thing, right? But that's 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 teaching people that that's the the solution to the answer is violence. So, but you know, good intentions plus authority equal tyranny. That is it. Mm-hmm. All right, and that's what everyone tries to do. They they try to put their their mor- morals to try to make a better society, and that's all well and good. But once you add in that governmental authority, the right to do it, it gets crazy. It turns into tyranny. But uh, if you know. I, 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 so before we uh, go into the next topic, I just want to uh, ask Jeremy real quick. So Jeremy, we can do a, a quick test of how impervious your business is to, uh, you know, damage reputation. Just shoot one of your dogs and return the, you know, the <laughs> <laughs> return the client's dog and say, you know what, he, he just wouldn't listen. You know, I'm sorry, <laughs> I had to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that would not. That'll go, go over well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, real was, well. It wasn't my fault. It was the dog's fault. Come on. The, you know what? Guns kill people, man. <laughs> that gun just they just hopped up and shot him. It just it just fired itself, you know. Sure, that definitely would hurt my bottom line. Um, <laughs> I, I word would get around fast. I mean, Long, Ooh, Long Island, Long, Long, Island's, Long Island's Long Island's pretty crowded, but it's not that big. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I try not to. Uh, I mean, I I try to enforce that. I, I try to live by the nap in my business life as well. <laughs> like Sometimes. Sometimes it's harder with dogs because they're a little Speaking more belligerent the than the children. Yeah. <laughs> the consistency is what, is what separates status from volunteers, I think. <laughs> well, yes, because you, you, you know, when you're when you're logically consistent, all those contradictions, like I'm, like the one I mentioned earlier, they all disappear. Um, and that is the listen. The, you guys are just being utopian right now. I, don't want to, <laughs> I can't handle it. I'm just, I'm yes. I'm just disgusted by your utopian. <laughs> You're, you know, Danilo's over here. He's a liberal, and Jeremy's a conservative. It's I vo- just I, I voted for Obama. Remember that. Don't forget. Okay. I know. <laughs> every episode. I have, to mention, I have to mention every episode. Come on. Is this a running? Jo- Please, I don't want to hear it. My, my, just, like my just, right. Just like, to right, I'm going to show on the webcam. I'm going to show on the webcam. Like first episode, you said it. It goes down here. This is my my your reputation with me. It's like a, vi- it's like a video game, and every time you say it, it just. Pretty soon you're going to be down here, man. You don't want to be well, down here. Well, come on, Dave. you got to give him credit. This is his weekly confessional. <laughs> this is the weekly confessional, but you know, maybe you could just say, I voted for another I, puppet. I a voted puppet. for a it, black man because he was black. That's why I voted for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. America needed change. They needed change. Isn't you know, that, change that, we could believe in. Isn't that funny? You know? Around the elections, I saw that a lot of comedians were saying that. You know what? I'm black. He's black. I'm voting for the black guy. All right? <laughs> well, I, well, yeah. You know, you well, know what's so funny is is black men in this country got the right to vote before women. So something tells me the next president might be a woman. If okay. if history repeats itself. <laughs> that's what, but, that's um, what this country needs is a woman. That's what we need. Everything's going to be all fixed. Foreign policy. That, you know what? System, I believe it. You know, everything will be fixed by a woman. You know Everything will be fixed if we just vote new people in next year. All right? Just get those scumbags out and get new guys in there because they're not controlled by the banks yet until like a week into the job. So for one week, we're going to have an actual awesome government, right? Just vote harder, Dave. That's all you have to do. You know, I go in there and I I grab my pen when I'm checking off and I just push it through the paper and then check them. (laughs) I vote so goddamn or so hard. That you like, I have to get three or four pins because I break them. <laughs> so, Chad's Chad's didn't exist when I voted. Okay, and it's, I just still, broke it, those bitches off. I voted for George W. No, I'm the, kidding. It, I, I wasn't. I, I didn't vote for George. W. <laughs> it still hasn't worked though, right? You 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 kept voting. You, all that all those broken pens and all that hard voting. It still hasn't worked though, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next time. No, no. You'd have more success getting a, a concrete wall. And getting your forehead and just slamming it into it as hard as possible, or becoming like uh, the son of like uh, a Rothschild. Nice. <laughs> not not to not to sound like a ten full hat guy, but they do control every central bank. So actually, I, I was I was told by a friend. I, I, I wonder if you guys what do you think of this? That uh, every time there's a new president, um, like uh, like in the first day or the second day, he, he goes into a dark room with all these you know um, these old men with cigars, and then they show him. They show him a video of uh, JFK being shot, and they say, "This is what would can happen." 
<laughs> well, you know, JFK, uh, JFK gave a speech saying that he was going to take uh, America uh, off of the uh, whatever we were on. Uh, we're on no standard right now. Yeah, but yeah he was going to do the silver certificates. He was yeah. going to put everything back on the silver yeah, standard. Silver, yeah. He di- They shot him a week later. Yeah, so, yeah, I think yeah, a week, a few months, something like that, yeah. Um, no, it was, it was two weeks later. It was like 14 days after that. Like that yeah. So that's just ridiculous. Like, you know, yeah, their puppet act, their puppet, uh, the puppet tried to break his strings. He, he tried to become a real boy and nope. Pinocchio is just a movie. Yeah. Stop, stop trying to. Break his... <laughs> so uh, I've heard, I've heard both those rumors, um, you know, and uh, I've done some investigation, but you know. Even if it's not that, even if even if it's not that bad, it's still, you know, it's they're, they're not. They're, it's it's not going to get any better. It doesn't matter who's in because I'm I'm pretty sure they do put they do pull them aside the first day and at least show them something. You know yeah. the stuff the secrets that everybody you know they have to because they're they're in that position now. They um, know who's going to win before the election. Those people are vetted. You know, like what is it? What is it? Uh, Kokesh said, um, Obama is the best president. That America's ever had, because he's grown the size of the American government leaps and bounds better than any other president. <laughs> so he's actually the like the government's best president that they've ever produced. <laughs> so it's uh you know I t- I told that I tell that to my dad all the time you know like I don't know why you're upset you know Obama is the best president that the America has ever had, <laughs> and he's there's like no, there's he, no sarcasm there right. <laughs> he blows up, man. He's like, what? I'm like, look, Dad. He grew the size of of the all knowing, powerful government, and they now know more and can do more than they did before him. So he's obviously better, right? He's much right, better. He's, he's much better at spending fiat currency. That you can tell you that right now. Oh man, he is the <laughs> best. <laughs> like seriously, the best. Like he printed or he <clears throat> used more than what the last two hundred years combined. Yeah, so, something, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, since the uh, since what seventeen seventy six until two thousand six, and then and then after that, the, the debt doubled <laughs> from two thousand. Well, it's down. it's doubled twice since he's been president. Yeah, yeah. He's well, the, no, 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 no. It, it couldn't have doubled twice. Oh no, it's doubled once. Just, my bad. Once. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because six it, when he got in, and now it's like sixteen. Well, I think it was. I, I think I remember the the graphs. It was <laughs> it was about a trillion. I th- I think Reagan took over. It was it was a trillion maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then he grew it. A couple, uh, he or he grew it a full trillion, or or he was the first one, uh, and then Bush, you know, the first Bush added to a little bit. Clinton, you know, with all the talk of the, uh, you know, the surplus that he had, which is just BS because oh. they were they were still. We could do a whole episode on Reagan and how the cons- getting back to the Reagan Revolution is such a bullshit idea, and I just I just want I just wanted to say on that last point, um, you know, you were saying about how he's he's outspent everybody else. Well, it, yeah, just until the next one, whoever. Comes yeah, exactly. Next. Exactly. The the the, big, the, at, the at this point, it's going to spin out of control so badly that the it's going to be forty dollars to buy a loaf of bread. I, I I honestly I don't know if I can't wait or wish it was tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, well, it, yeah, it's it's going to make the Weimar Republic look like a you know walk in the park. Uh, <laughs> well, when you have yeah. continual war, you can't you can't support it because there's no profit in war if you're not taking. And if you look what. The government does. They, they, their, their profit is getting corporate corporations, you know, money. You know, like, look at Halliburton was worth like a hundred billion. Uh, no, no, they were worth like fifty million, or maybe one or two billion before uh, the Iraq War, and now they're worth like five hundred billion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just like one of those things where it's like, you know. Oh, and I read another thing today. Would you like to know how much our great leader's wealth has grown since he's been president? Five hundred and eighty-seven times. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> he has. He's worth five hundred and eighty-seven times more than he was before he was president. I'm sure, it's just a coincidence. Uh, you know, and that's just for your guy's freedom. Okay, that is just for your freedom. He's going to spend all that money on charities and puppies and all this other shit. So don't worry a bit, guys. He he did not use government to get money or rich. Just relax. Just watch your cartoons and just relax. <laughs> It's it's not his fault. It's not it's that darn inflation, man. It'll get you every time. <laughs> it hasn't inflated that bad because <laughs> you know, it a year before we invaded or we before the government uh invaded Iraq, uh Iraq dropped the dollar. Same thing with Syria, same thing with uh 
Af- well, Afghanistan never had a central bank, but now they do. Um, so it's just not really a shocker. You look to see who we're going to be invading or who the government's going to be invading. Watch, see who drops the, the petrodollar. The, the, mm-hmm. A lot of Americans don't know that term, but watch to see who drops the petrodollar. That, that's actually what I tell, used to tell my patients a lot is, uh, you know, right before 9-11, there were seven countries um, that didn't have a central bank. And then I said right after 9-11 happened, soon after that, two countries gained a central bank. Can you guess which ones? <laughs> Afghanistan and Iraq, right? Oh, coincidence. Those are the ones we invaded. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm we, sure we, we, I'm the CIA sure. created boogeyman to give us reasons to invade and take over and replace their government that would accept a central bank. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not a shocker when you see the motives. Like if you just pull yourself out of the propagandized explanation of it and really look at what's happening, it's, it's very simple. They want – one bank for the whole world. Well, that's not fair. They're just they're just trying to spread democracy, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's four children over there that are just trying to. We're just trying to we feed, just need make to sure that they don't money get money and loan it, and then that's it. <laughs> that, it's that simple, really. I wish they would print more money and, and loan it to me, but you know, um, I you know, I'm just a tax slave, so we're gonna bail everyone out. <laughs> but, you know, I offer them no political uh, <laughs> gain, so. <laughs> Actually, I, I remember, uh, you know, if people think that printing money solves anything, I, I usually say, if that's the solution, then Zimbabwe, Argentina, Colombia would all be the richest nations on earth, right? <laughs> and Weimar Republic, right? In Germany. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. Just the whole idea of a, a non-backed fiat currency is ridiculous. But when the whole world sees that as, you know, like when the when the dollar becomes the only currency in the world, you know, everyone, it doesn't matter how much you print of it. <laughs> Right, right. I guess that's the thought that they've got because, I mean, obviously that's never been tried outside of gold. Like everyone realizes gold's worth, you know, how much it is worth. But, mm-hmm. I mean, what's going to happen when every central bank and then they collapse all the, the nation's uh, monetary and, and print a one world currency that everyone in the world is using the same currency? Like what's going to happen then? I mean, I know we're going way off topic, but, you know, I think that's the ultimate goal and one, you know, once you control the wealth, you control everything, and obviously that's what's happening. That's what has happened. Oh, yeah, it's been happening for a very long time. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> if they go, if they go, if they go one currency, then it they, it won't. You're right. It won't matter how much. Although it doesn't matter even for us here. It doesn't matter how much they print now. Uh, I mean, what hurts us? I mean, for them, it doesn't matter. <laughs> They'll just keep printing uh, because because most people still are and still haven't caught on to the fact that every time they they print more money, uh, it just lowers the value of what's in your pocket, mm. and uh, you know that hidden inflation tax that nobody, most people, don't even pay attention to, uh, and that's it's, just continues. Why 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 th- why th- why things uh, that are heavily regulated just continue to get more and more expensive? Uh, because of because the you know with with the inflation and the regulation just every they have the prices have to keep going up and up and up, um, and people are none the wiser because they just want to stay instead of being mad at the bankers they and and the people doing that they want to be mad at the corporations because uh, you know, the, the corporations are just taking advantage. They're just uh, uh, why well, not use uh, the government to uh, get richer? That's their I mean that's the thought process behind it. Well, I mean if everyone's doing it, why not? Hate the game, well, that's, not the player, right? Well, it's the only way you can in, in a controlled economy, you know. It's in a, obvi- well, you know, uh, not a-, uh, <laughs> a fascist economy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you and that you can't you, you can't control <laughs> an economy, but you sure can fash it up. Oh, you, you 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 can control it. All right, they do a pretty darn good job. The, um, it doesn't a- matter how controlled you want to be. There's always always going to be a black market for something. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah, that, that's well. That's those are those are created when you have a, com- a control command com- you know economy. That's mm-hmm. that's where the black markets come from. And and again, the average person thinks that black markets are horrible and and all these bad things happen there. And to do some bad things happen there, yeah. But th- there's there also gotta be a, lot- a black market. You know, also, also a lot of wonderful <laughs> things. I mean, I mean, it's racist. It's I mean, a racist market. <laughs> <laughs> bringing us back for, full circle to the original topic. If you are a conservative, if you're a liberal, if you believe in government in any way, please listen intently to the next, by my clock, 23 minutes, but I feel like we're going to go over (laughs) um, next few uh, minutes because we're really going to get into a chunk of of basically what all of us live by. Wouldn't you agree, Danilo? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely it's become my mantra. Um, and uh, to the uh, irritation of a lot of my close friends and family, unfortunately, but what are you going to do? You gotta, you live by your principles, right? Live by your principles, die by your principles, right? If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything, right? So volunteerism is uh, a philosophy that I discovered a few years ago that's really fascinating. And, um, <coughs> you know, I like to talk about it. And basic definition of what I consider volunteerism is, um, you know, you su I support the voluntary interaction between peaceful individuals, basically is what it is, right? Um, and how can any sane person be against voluntary interaction? Because if you are, you're by definition in support of slavery, right? Somebody, what about the kids, man? Somebody <laughs> yeah, I don't think about the kids, the poor, you know, the uh, disabled, the handicapped, but um, <laughs> as long as it's voluntary, it's all kosher to me. Um, and, I, I, you know, I... I uh, I describe myself as voluntarist, anarchist, anarcho-capitalist, um, although it seems to me anarcho-capitalist is a redundant phrase, um, you know, um, just like, uh, <laughs> just like, you know, the pu public, pro public property is an oxymoron, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> and private property is a redundant phrase, right? Because property must by definition be private, right? Government yes. does not, is illegitimate and cannot reasonably own anything, right? At all, it's just a monopoly on violence and supported by the belief in the myth of authority. So, so, so volunteerism is uh, it's just living your life by your principles. You know, you 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 um, you know you love your friends and family because you know you trust them and you you know they're good people and you know. Um, but why would you apply a different standard for the rest of humanity? You know, are the rest of humanity evil and trying to take advantage of you? I don't think so. <laughs> Most likely not. Um, I think everyone's just trying to make a living and trying to feed their kids and and you know put their kids through college and. Uh, you know, uh, pay pay their mortgage and things like that. You know, most people just want to get by, right? So, so what do you think, uh, Dave? Well, I was going to read off the the strict definition of voluntarism for everybody, real quick, in case they don't know it. Um, it is a uh, voluntarism is a libertarian philosophy which holds all forms of human association should be voluntary. The principle f most frequently used to support voluntarism is the non-aggression princ principle. It is closely associated with anarcho-capitalist which they're kind of one in the same but an anarcho-capitalist doesn't actually have to be like a you know philosophical voluntarist there i mean there's market anarchists um that don't don't care how much force is used um it's basically held up by the non-aggression principle which once i heard it and learned about it and read it i, I fell in love I, I thought wow this is a great way to live your life you know um and I, I think that that's – if you wanted to just not even – you could almost just call yourself a non-aggression principalist, I guess, if you wanted to define yourself. But voluntarist is, 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 is basically what Danilo said. It's being against all forms of coercion and compulsion and uh, you support all – that all human interaction should be voluntary, uh, free from any kind of force. Uh, outside of contractual agreements and uh, you know lots of things are implied by that you know and, and we define voluntarists define government differently than almost everybody else in the whole world um, they define it as a coercive monopoly on crime you know do as I say not as I do you know you, we can do this you can't mm -hmm. um, and that's essentially what the government does you know they have a coercive, mon a geographical monopoly on crime, compulsion, and coercion, and that's you're against that. It's, it, you know, I was telling the guys earlier. You know, I'm not. I don't identify as an anarchist. I identify as a voluntarist. That also just happens to make me an anarchist, because anarchists don't believe in, or, or they don't believe in rulers. Well, to be a ruler, you have to use force. Um. Just wanting everyone to live a voluntary life is incompatible with government, you know. So that's that's mainly the the big chunk of what voluntarism is, and there's a lot more to talk about it. But you know, I, I guess Jeremy can fill in anything that I didn't. Um, as I've mentioned previously, uh, the first person who who used the word voluntarist with me was what set me on this path, and uh, like both of you. Uh, you know, I I use the terms voluntarist, anarchist. Uh, I I personally prefer abolitionist, uh, but as do uh, I. <laughs> re yeah, re relatively interchangeably, uh, because 
you know, like like you said, Dave, you know, being a voluntarist makes you an you know makes you an anarchist because you you also don't want uh, you know also don't want any rulers and you don't want to be forced to do anything. Uh, for me, uh, I, I came across pretty much that definition that you were just read off, Dave. Uh, after I was first introduced to the word, I went home and looked it up and uh, this, uh, decided to uh, investigate further. And I read that definition, and it it made sense to me right away that all interactions should be voluntary whether that's in your personal life uh, or, or your professional life or just your economic life in general, uh, you know, as, which ties back into the, to the original, dis, you know, the beginning discussion we had about disassociation and association. Um, you should be able to make the choices uh, who you let in your house, who you let in your life, who you let in your business. Uh, and uh, Freedom of any, association. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and anything beyond that is... You, you end up having to be forced in some way, which which is what government does, as you said, Dave. That's that's all government does is, is use force uh, to make things happen, which means it, it can't be voluntary. Uh, I also discovered the the, the non-aggression principle uh, at the same time, and again, as as soon as I read up on it, it made sense to me. Uh, don't 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 initiate violence. You know, said another way, don't you know, don't start no shit. There won't be no shit. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's, bas it's basically a takeoff of the golden rule. It, you know, that's been well, said plenty of times to, to a certain extent. A lot of people get it confused. It's not the golden rule. It's the silver rule. Do not do unto others as you would not have them do to you. I know that sounds confusing, but if you break it down, it makes absolutely perfect sense. No, that's, that's, that's true. I, I agree with that. Because uh, the golden rule – sorry to interrupt <laughs> your, 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 your speech here. The golden rule implies that if you're okay with being violent – having violence done upon you, that it's okay for you to do that to someone else. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. So if you're a sadomasochist, <laughs> the golden rule works perfectly with you. I, actually, I was thinking of Fifty Shades of Grey, but I, I think even in, in, in uh, like, uh, what, what are they call S&M, you know, stuff, yeah, uh, yeah. I think they still consider the person who is like, who takes the role of the slave as they're the ones that's really in control, even though you think the person who's like with the whip and the and the and the chain, like like they seem like they're in control, but no, it's really the person who's the slave is in control. Like they're willingly going into that situation, right? Knowing that they're in control. So yes, I, I still but think yeah, 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 in control, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, so uh, you know, uh, someone really just slapped me up the side of the head with a silver rule. I'd never heard of it, and it makes perfect sense. You know, do not do unto others, so don't do unto others. That you would not have them do to you, mm -hmm. not do unto others. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It's it. Okay, so we'll use this. It's it's more like the silver rule then. <laughs> uh, but basically, like I said, you know, it's just. I, and, I'm I'm here to 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 add new things to the, the, the <laughs> to, to the to the, the the pot, you know. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, I'm sorry, the, I interrupted you. <laughs> It's not, you know, and, and that's not to be confused with a, a lot of people make that th mistake, uh, not to confuse it with pacifism, because it doesn't mean you cannot retaliate if something happens to you. But just don't don't go out. Don't go out of your way to aggress against others. And that's that's all you that's all you offer to others. And that's all you expect in return is that nobody aggresses against you. And that's the pro that's basically a promise you make to yourself and to others. You don't aggress against me. I won't aggress against you. Uh, it's that simple, and you know. So between the 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 definition and the definition of the nap, I was pretty sold. Um, and then that you know we can we can go into that further. Uh, but for me, it was that, and then everything uh, springing uh, up from property rights, uh, starting with uh, self ownership, uh, which is where all property rights spring from. Uh, you know, if you own yourself. Then you have the right to own. You have the right to own other things if you, you know, mix your labor with the resources and you create something, or um, and, and then you can protect something. Then, then it's yours to have, uh, and uh, nobody can take that from you through force or fraud. Um, or if they, or if they do, then again, you can retaliate in in, in appropriate ways uh, to rectify the situation because your property and your time and your labor has been stolen from you. Um, and for me, that that's. It's it centers around the nap for me, uh, and that's you know it's it's a principle, not a law. So it's not everybody has to believe in it, not everybody has to follow it. But that's how I try to live my life, and uh, that's why I feel comfortable if if somebody wants to use the term voluntarist with to describe me, 
I, I'm perfectly fine with that because uh, everything needs to be voluntary. Uh, other, if it's not voluntary, it's not right in my book. So <laughs> that's where I land on that. Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah. I like the the you know the the basic principle of self ownership, uh, property rights, and uh, non aggression. You know, very simple. And like you said, Jeremy, it's a it's a principle, not a law. And I think that's what gets con a lot of people confused. You know, when they they're thinking in terms of the status mindset, they're like, well, what if you know, people are not nice. Like, you expect everyone to just be nice? <laughs> you know, you're like, no, of course not. It's just like, I'm not going to start fights. That's it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not responsible for everybody else, right? It's, I'm just responsible for me. Um, and, uh, and I also like uh, looking at that in terms of, um, you know, past, present, and future, right? So, so, you know, in the past, you know, our past is represented by our possessions, right? And basically... Um, when we work, we are we are using our labor and time, creating something of value, and then we we take that value, whatever it is, you know, money or whatever, and we buy stuff with it, and so the property basically is a reflection of the labor. So it basically reflects of our past labor, and then so so that would be the property rights, and then and then the present would be, um, um, you know, self ownership and and liberty, right? And, and 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 again, so 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 loss of property rights would be theft, loss of the present or self ownership would be um, slavery, right, n n no longer free, and then you live in the future is loss of the future would be murder or death, right, you just, you just die. <laughs> so so, so I, I like looking at it that way, that we all exist in past, present, and future. I think that's a pretty interesting way to look at it. So. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, as a voluntarist, you basically believe two core things, that you own yourself and that you believe in the non-aggression principle. That's it. There's, it's that simple, really. Um, and a lot of things come with claiming that you own yourself because if you if you don't think you own yourself, then the government, the collective, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, owns you. You have no control over your actions, which you do because nothing can control you. Uh, they may cage you. They may put you in a box. They may kill you, but they didn't control you. Only you can control you. Um, but that's, I mean, that's the two core things is self-ownership. You know, <laughs> I love talking to, to, I don't want to call them statist, uh, government believers. Um, I love talking to government believers and telling them that I own myself. And they go, oh, yeah, well, I, yeah, I own myself too. And I go, oh, okay. So you're not like a pawn of the government or like you, you pay your taxes and you're, uh, you know, you believe that everything the government do, uh, like you believe in a government, like you should be subjugated. And they're like. Uh, uh, I really like what you said before, but not now. And it's it's one of those things where there's a huge amount of cognitive dissonance getting put in there. And I know we throw that word around a lot, but that's usually the biggest one. Uh, being tricked that you own yourself, but you really you don't. And or not really, but you you believe that you don't. All right, you you own yourself, but you believe that you don't. And that's a huge thing is, you know, like, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I tell people that they should be free and they say, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> like, they, they're not saying that, but they're saying that. And you're going, would you take a step back and listen to yourself, man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you're saying that I don't own myself and that, you know, I don't know what's good for myself. You know, I ask people all the time, you know, do I know what's best for you? Never had anybody say yes. Never. <laughs> okay, then why do you believe in government? Because they believe they know what's best in you for you. Well, because other people. You can't control other people. What about you? Would you go on a killing rampage if there was no government? Would you go on a... Would you go... I don't know. Poison all the water in the world if there was no government? No. Just, no. It's stupid. Like, all you can control in this world is yourself. <clears throat> or attempt to control yourself, and that's it. You can't control others. And if you're not willing to admit that there's a contradiction there, that we need government there for the bad people, well, who's the bad people? Are you bad? I'm not bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's the bad? Name me one bad person that well, uh, that shouldn't have been just shot. And, and the funny, the funny thing is, most people. Um, can't even claim that they control their own actions. Like, you know, you ask an alcoholic, can you control how much alcohol you're drinking, right? Or, 
or a smoker or, you know, maybe a binge eater or, you know, or anybody, you know, who has a problem with self-control, right? So most of us have problems with even controlling ourselves. Okay, now think about how much, how much can you control your spouse? How much can you control your father, your mother, your brother, your friend? How much can you control that? And you really think that you should or you can control somebody who lives states away from you? <laughs> people are bad, so we need government. Made up of people. Made up of people, people because are people bad. are bad. Uh, we need government made up of people because people are bad. We need government made up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they don't get that ever. Like if you – all right. Let's let's take the word government out and just say weapon. All right, if there was a weapon that could allow you to dominate anybody on Earth, good people aren't going to want that weapon. Bad people are. They're going to want that weapon. That weapon is going to attract them. That's what government does. It attracts the worst, you know. And it drives me nuts. You know, today I had a thought driving. Society looks down on a person who sells their body for sex whores their body out but they look up to the soldier to the policeman and to you know all these other highly revered people when they're doing the exact same thing no they're doing worse much worse because they're no they're whoring the politicians. their body out okay no I'm talking about the politicians who are who are dealing in stolen goods, right? The prostitute does not deal in stolen goods. She's dealing with with her own body, right? <laughs> She's dealing with what she has, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, so the prostitute like, is regarded with a little more res- with more respect. The drug dealers more respect. The politicians are down here, <laughs> All right? Oh, of course. I mean, if people looked at it logically, yeah. <laughs> well, in a, in a, yeah, I was going to say in a sane world that would be the case, but no, I I, Dave, I think Dave was making another point. You know, okay, that, okay, sorry. You know, what, no, no, no. It's fine. You, you're right. You're right. What you were saying. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, you, you you nailed it. <laughs> you you were ma- you you were making the point that that the government servants uh, you know are 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 whoring themselves out essentially yeah. by you know taking and to tie into what you said Danelle, taking stolen funds um, to to because in- they think it's right that's the whole problem and they don't think it's stolen <laughs> no well of course yeah, yeah. but that's 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 a separate issue but it's it's all again the the reason that this this happens is because people it goes back to the fear issue we've talked about before. Um, you know, because yeah, with people, certain people fear the 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 quote unquote bad people, um, so that's why they think they need government, and people don't realize that because government, you know, it's power, and attra- power attracts people that want to use that power and and are easily corruptible, uh, and even the ones that have the best intentions, depending on how pure they are to begin with it just that that's how long it takes them to break down eventually and either get kicked out of the system because they they stand by their principles or they get marginalized uh, or they you know they are for they are for they are forced out one way or another uh, or they they convert <laughs> and they just become another you know wheel in the in the uh, in the in the scheme of things and it's not um you know, pe- people just they because of those bad people out there. People think they need the government to keep going, uh, but unfortunately, they forget that these bad people are still out there now, and for the most part, are still doing things right now. So government isn't actually stopping them from doing that. They may catch some of them after the fact, uh, and may be able to punish them that way. Uh, but most, you know, if you check if you check the records at most major, you know, police stations and 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 jurisdictions across the country, uh, the rate their their conviction rates, you know, are relatively low. <laughs> uh, because you know, it can, even if their conviction rates are high, you know, the, the unsolved cases far outnumber anything they could ever keep on keep on top of, and uh, people get away with this stuff all the time. So it still exists now. Uh, all we are saying, uh, as voluntarists, is it'd be much better if you take that coerc- coercive force of government out of the way, uh, because it happens anyway, and uh, find better solutions where you don't have one entity that has a monopoly on all these services. So well, it's the myth. It's the myth of authority. You know, it's that someone has the right, not the ability, to control you. It's when you believe that something has the moral authority. To control you, 
That's the problem. That's what, in a nutshell, that's what a statist believes. They believe that there's a authority out there that has the right, not the ability. There's a clear difference. Okay? Believing that someone has the right to violently dominate you and someone violently dominating you are two completely different things. And um, I missed it on my definition but or, or explanation, but another thing that makes you a voluntarist is belief that taxation is theft. And you cannot not believe that uh, and call yourself a voluntarist. And a lot of people especially statists, just do not see that taxation is theft. They see that you're getting a product back from it, so therefore it's not bad. Like if they just stole and never gave anything back, they would never, they, they would riot, right? There would be riot, like government would never exist. So <clears throat> it's one of those things where that's really one of the hardest hard button issues because the minute you say that there shouldn't be taxation, they give you what these ridiculous responses of, why don't you just build a hut out in the middle of the woods and live by yourself if you don't want society? <laughs> I think and we've, you're all, saying, we've all gotten that. <laughs> and it's just, or what about the roads? Or what about the, the kids or the babies or the hospitals and all? That? And that is, our, that is the, the hardest thing to convey to people that, Taxation is theft. It's a coercive levy placed upon an individual by an authority, essentially, and um, or fine or levy. And it's it's hard to get people to admit that that it, it, they see it. They see it on the wall. They see the writing on the wall. They see the that it is theft, but they will not admit it. And the hardest thing to do is get someone to admit it. You know, that's the purpose of this podcast is to get to plant those seeds, be non-confrontational. And, you know, let people figure it out for themselves because, in an essence, that's what we believe, people figuring stuff out for themselves. You know, <clears throat> the individual over the collective. And, you know, they think, well, you just don't want any – you know, what's, what's some of the common responses you, you have, Danilo? You don't want any society or, or – yeah, I've, I've got, you know, why don't you just go live out in, in the woods by yourself? Or you, you don't want to contribute to society? <laughs> you, you, uh, you know, um, you, you don't think it's your civic duty to to pay your fair share? <laughs> and and I think, uh, actually, we, we discussed this on the on the Seeds of Liberty Facebook page when you posted the, uh, the meme about the, um, the, the slave, right, and taxation. And there was one guy who, who was making the argument that government is like a homeowners association, right? And that um, you know paying taxes is just like paying rent. You know, we're just we're just paying rent, right? We. I don't think there's one homeowner association in the world that has <laughs> nuclear bombs. Just just <laughs> yeah. just saying. And and that spies and that can print their own money and that can. <laughs> <laughs> and, correct, you correct. Know, keep going, and and then a control well, over the and, education and system. Legitimately and, put people in jails, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the minute the, you know that's the thing. You know, um, you know, people think that it's just you know government is just a group of people getting together and deciding things. Like it's just it's just a chess club. You know, it's just like a church. It's just like a, a homeowners association. People are just getting uh, getting together and doing stuff. I'm like no, the minute that one chess club wages a violent, bloody war against another chess club, I might be inclined to believe you. <laughs> right? You know, the minute, the minute that, that one homo association, you know, you know, prints a ton of money, <laughs> I might be inclined to believe you. But, you know, until then, I think um, the federal government is a, a, a beast of a different world. <laughs> or, or, yes. or burns down every house of a certain color. You yeah. Know? And, and, even, yeah. and even, I would, I would even... Uh, you know, isolate the federal government a lot from the state government, right? Because just because they don't have the monopoly on on currency um, that the state that the federal government does, and and that's a major major um, advantage that they have, and so you can't really consider them on the same plane. Although there is, you know, state tyranny is also pretty bad, um, but um, you know, one, one, well, once you have a federal institution just like engulfing all of it, you know, uniting it under force under coercive law. You know that's and, and then and then waging you know foreign wars, occupations, and invasions on your behalf. <laughs> on your on behalf. your behalf. Yeah, yeah. Yes. On your behalf. Like yeah. this is all done in your name. 
it's, so, it's, it's for your own good. It's for your own good. It's for well, your own good. well, actually, that that that's part of the problem, and I've actually been dealing with this a lot recently. And it's it always it always annoys me, and 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 it would make me laugh if it wasn't so serious. You know, the the crowd that talks about the being, you know, the consent of the governed and stuff like that, and and they, you know, they the, the government they think the government is them, and and the government's us, and you you know why you met why you mad at the government? You know, it's we, we make the decisions, and and no no you don't because if if that was true, then you are all responsible for all the wars and all the stuff that's happened. You, you can't have that both ways. You have to, either the government is the people and then the people are responsible for everything that's done. It's not even just in our name, it's it, then you are responsible for it, uh, which is why I want nothing to do with government and I don't want to be tied to it in any way. And I when people talk about we this and we that, no, you know, I... <laughs> You, you, you got a pet squirrel or something? Like, who's this we? What, is, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> all um, you know, like, uh, I always think, you know, how much of the product of my labor has went to just build one bomb that had blown up, you know, mm-hmm. a kid that had nothing to do with anything in a foreign land that I'll never hear or see the re- repercussions of. And, you know, it just it breaks my heart to a point where it really upsets me. And um, I just... <clears throat> Don't think people take take a chance or, or, or sit back and really look at things like that. They they just as long as they're comfortable, as long as everything is working for them, um, it's uh, they're okay with it. And you know they they don't care. You know it's like the uh, it's like it's like it's like being in a, your bedroom, but your whole house is on fire and you you just don't know it. You know, take a peek out that door and see what's going on, guys. Like it's not <laughs> it's not all rainbows and roses. Well, that's that's the compartmentalization I was talking about last week, you know, where people could just they don't be you you were saying, you know, people don't think about what their money goes to if it's something that they don't agree with or, you know, something like war, something like bombs. They don't think of these. They don't think of these things at all. It never it never even crosses their mind because they compartmentalize. They put that out. Oh, certain things have to be done. Or even if I don't agree with them. You know, most people believe they are the go- you know the the uh, they are the government crowd. That's them, and they believe. Okay, well, I have to go along with certain things that I don't agree with because I get all these other wonderful benefits. You know, but you were saying you asked Danilo before about what are the objections you get, and it's it's always something. Well, what about this and what about that? Because they don't to them they can cancel out some of the negative things by all these wonderful positive things the government gives us even though the government doesn't give us any of it they hire out contractors mm-hmm. <laughs> to do the work for them they're just taking our money and giving it back and giving it to the contractors and in in most cases giving no bid contracts so and so their friends and their cronies make all the money um, and then Nobody else is allowed to provide certain services because they have that monopoly on on certain sections, and but people are they remain ignorant to the to the to the da- to the bad side, um, and I've said I've said so many times before that it's 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 so willful at this point the ignorance it's, you can't even. Uh, you know in the age of information it's it's impossible to claim that you just didn't know anymore. Because all the world's, world's knowledge is at your fingertips, most of the time in your pocket, you know, for most of us that have a smartphone, you can, you can look up anything and, and check into anything and learn about anything. Uh, but people choose not to because they take the good things they get and ignore everything else. And even if they disagree, uh, you know, they'll fall into the trap of, of, of accepting their fate, that this is, this is the system we have and we have to work within it. And it's... You know, even if I disagree, I still, you know, I'm still going to pay my taxes and I'm still going to support the troops and I'm still going to support the country, even if I dis- even if I disagree with the current government, you know, that whole attitude. And it's, you know, Dave, you were saying before about the, the issue with recognizing that about theft. And part of the problem is that most people don't it's not even that they don't want to accept that it's theft they don't even see it because when you throw around words like theft and slavery which this also goes to 
the conversation you were talking about on Facebook that uh, about that one guy who was challenging us on the on the slavery argument, um, where they think it they it, it's it's it can be a, a trigger word if we want to get all um, SJW uh, <laughs> on people, <laughs> um, but it's uh, you know it's some people just think you're trying to be you know use hyperbole and 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 make it sound worse than it is. Um, so it's not even they don't want to. It's not that, like I said, it's not that they don't want to see it. They don't understand it because to them, theft they think of somebody coming up well, and picking yeah. their pocket, or somebody stealing their car, or somebody holding them at gunpoint, you know, and, and emptying out their cash register. Like that's what they see as theft. Uh, they don't want to look at other possible scenarios that could be similar. Uh, but not exact. So if it, in, in that instance, if it's not exact to them, oh, then it's not that. It can't possibly be that. And and also, most of them, even if they complain, would still say that they voluntarily pay their taxes to some extent because well, they, they, they say they're happy to pay their taxes. Well, yeah, yeah. So, well, if they're if they're happy to, then it's a voluntary situation for them. It is. And you know they so they they don't see it as they they can't possibly see it as theft at all because they're getting the benefits as you guys have said before uh they're basically giving it over voluntarily you know the weakest and, argument i've heard in response to that you know you say oh i'm okay with paying taxes and okay okay i'm not will you grant me the same condolences you know if you want to pay taxes till you're dead that's fine with me but would you that, say no it, it won't work then <laughs> I'll go, okay, all right. Well, just indulge me for a second. Let's say let's say there's no government, right? Or, or let's just say no one paid taxes. There was no, like, no one's going to come take eventually from you or lock you in a cage if you don't pay. How long would government exist? And they are those zero days, like, if they came out tomorrow, hey, we're abolishing the IRS and we're not going to penalize anybody that doesn't pay taxes in any way. The government would go bankrupt in no time, which is kind of silly because, I mean... They just print their they, own money. They already are bank. They already are bank. Oh, of course. That well, they've never been <laughs> rupt or whatever you want to uh, well, solvent. They, well, yeah, always, they don't have any money. They've always yeah. been bankrupt. But um, you know, they would go belly up, so to say. They wouldn't be able to pay for these services that people believe that they uh, you know, get from the government. And then they go, well, then you would just be taxed anyways. You know, like you have to drive on roads. You'd have to have water. You'd have to have power. And I go, yeah, but all that would be voluntary. Like, yeah, you have to have all those things, but it would be voluntary. Like, it wouldn't be gun to your head, you're using this service. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's say there's two road like two road companies and you've got a contract with one of them. Or or you know, you can boycott better. You can uh, there's no force behind it. You you're not forced into paying and they still they're just like, well, it's six one half. They think it's six one half. Uh and, and I just say, you know, it's not. It's there's a huge difference between Involuntary, involuntary. You know, like if if you don't believe so, then I'm coming over to your house tonight with a gun and I'm eating everything out of your fridge. Um, but I'm, 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 you know, this is all up to you. You know, it's if it's okay with you. Yeah. You know, but <clears throat> and if you try to stop me, I'm going to shoot you. So it, it's it, it's for your own good, right? <laughs> it's the hardest thing to do is get people to realize that taxation is theft. It um. On, on grounds that it's not consensual, it's not voluntary, and, and you can you can define taxation however you want, you can name it and, and warp it to whatever you want, but unless someone is consenting to something, it's wrong. You know. Yeah. Well, people, you know, going back to like I said, they it's not that they don't you know they they don't want to see it's not that they don't want to see it they can't see it, um, and they're not going to. You know, getting them over that hump. I mean, I, I try to use the 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 argument. Okay, well, would you let anybody? You know, would you let your neighbors do this? Say your neighborhood got together and decided they were going to start making some rules, and that everybody had to agree to. And at the beginning, everybody agrees to it and sounds wonderful. Okay, great. You know, we have these rules. Okay, now we need a little money to do some repairs, and you know, they everybody else agrees that they should take a certain amount of money from you. Um, and at the beginning, it sounds wonderful because you're gonna, it's gonna pay for these services that are needed in the neighborhood. Okay, now 
now they did now, you know, say there's 10, you know, say there's 20 houses. Okay. Well, at the beginning, everything was going, going along swell. Almost everybody agreed to everything. And even the stuff that certain people didn't agree to wasn't killing them. So everybody was fine. Now, now you have a situation where say 12 people out of the group, 14 people, 16, whatever, you know, anything over 10 (laughs) want something that the other part really doesn't want it is goes against their moral code goes against their religious beliefs whatever it is they just really it whatever it is they just don't want a part of it would you still be okay with that money being taken from them well no most people will say no especially if it's you would you would you still feel right about you know people taking well no well then why why when you expand that you know why is that why is that different you know, instead of twenty people talking, why don't you move to Somalia? Million. Well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> like right now, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm just thinking, why don't you move to Somalia? Because that's <laughs> that's that is the response you're going to get from these guys. That's what you're going to get from a statist when you say that. Well, those are those are co- those are cop out phrases, which goes back well, to what yeah, you they lose for the defenses because most of them are either fal- they're either false dichotomies or straw men. You know, they're all they're, they're it's one fallacy or no, another. Well, it's That's their the automatic response. It's their rationale propped up by their their indoctrination. Okay, they're just saying to you what they're trying to. They've got a box and they're trying to fit an answer into this, and we're trying to show them that. The box isn't real. You need to look around, <laughs> and they, you know, they, they, everything has to be compartmentalized. It has to be thought out. You know, it has to be. Well, how does this work within politics? How does this work within this the system that we have right now? And they're going to tell you, well, if you don't like it, you can leave. I mean, how many times do you know, have you heard? Well, you don't have to pay taxes here. You can just leave. <laughs> What's your response to that? You know, like what's your what's your honest response when someone says, "Okay, we want the government here. If you don't like it, you can leave." Well, supposing uh, that person can speak for everybody magically, but that argument I think assumes that um, that the government has the control of everything, right? <laughs> control of all the land. They own everything. They have full ownership, right? And we are just leasing from, which is essentially what what uh, property tax. The you know the message conveys that we are just leasing. You'd never actually own your home ever, right? You you, you spend you know decades of your life working hard, paying off your mortgage, um, exorbitant interest rates, and uh, and then and then you add additional insult with, with inflation. Your the prop you know the, the value of your property plummets. You know with a with a couple of trillion dollars uh, banged out, <laughs> and now and now your house is like. Uh, no, you know, no, nobody wants to go in there for uh, for a nap, you know, <laughs> and it's kind of it's pretty sad. You know, you put all this you put all this time and effort into it, and and then and then people have the idea. You know, I, I paid off my mortgage; it's mine. No, actually, it's not. <laughs> stop, stop. Maybe you own you own the, um, you know, the um, the house that's on the land. The, maybe the wood, the you know, the, the nails that make up, you know, the roof. Okay, you own that, but the land? No, you don't own that. Can you separate your house from the land? If you can't do that, then I'm sorry, <laughs> you don't own your house. <laughs> you know, perhaps uh, you know a, a person with a trailer home trailer park has more of a claim of ownership <laughs> or an RV <laughs> than uh, you know than a person with a house. So, so that argument, uh, you know, claims ownership, which which you know, ownership by definition, I think, is um, something. It, it, you know, you can you can basically. I think I go by the homesteading pr- uh, principle, which is like you know, if you can. If you can take a previously, you know, um, unused raw piece of land and through your work and through your effort make make it into something, you know, useful or maybe something productive, you know, you grow things and you sell things, um, then then you can confer ownership to something, right, to, to a piece of land. But if you can't do that and, and if you're not actively using it, you can't really claim ownership. Like, like what's to stop someone from just saying, you know what, I, this was – I was the first – on this, you know, continent, I claim the entire continent. <laughs> I think that's what right? status believe the government yeah. is. Yeah. You know, the, oh, the government owns this whole area. <laughs> oh, well, hey, government, where are you? Come on, <laughs> come on down here. Show me where you own. Show me exactly what you own. Yeah. You know? Well, because there's stuff like federal and public land, uh, they 
technically do own it at the present moment <laughs> as far as, as they far own as it most... because p people believe they own it well, well exactly that's what i was gonna say because people because people believe that that's that's how it is and and the problem you know with, with you were saying about the you know people that just tell you just to leave um you know obviously they they do believe that the government owns pretty much everything of course if you ask them as you were saying Danelle, they'll probably still tell you that they think they own their house or their business or whatever mm -hmm. um and their friends and family may own their stuff but everything else is sure it's the government's <laughs> so yeah if if you don't like it you can leave well that brings us to the problem back back to the problem of consent um uh, because you know to tell one person to leave okay maybe um but to tell thousands hundreds of thousands of people millions at this point maybe that are just so fed up and don't want to deal with this anymore um that we should just leave because everybody else agrees well no because if you run down the list of everything government does most people won't agree with the majority of it um but they fall into that trap of still thinking they have to put up with the bad stuff because they get the good stuff um but they you know so they don't they won't agree with that well okay so you don't really you don't really give consent to these things uh you know certainly <laughs> the hard the hardcore status do um you know because they're, they're willing to put up with it but most other people that are against certain things like really and are actively trying to change certain things even if they're working within the government trying to change certain things they're obviously not consenting to these actions so and you can't give consent for another person it just it, consent does not work like that you can only you can only give consent for yourself so when people say well if you don't like it leave well no you don't get to speak for me or the other 300 million plus people in this country uh -huh. even if you know what some of them think even if you believe that the overwhelming majority think the same way you still don't get to make that call so it in all honesty, I mean, I will, I will try to talk, I will try to talk people through that when they bring that argument up. When that's their, well, to even call it an argument is is laughable. It's not an actual argument. Uh, no, but it's you're they, trying to fight cognitive dissonance, is what it is. Well, yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll try to work through that. But the the realistic answer is that that's a ridiculous statement. You don't, you you can't give consent for me. You can't give consent for anybody else. So, what right do you have? And to tell anybody else where to go, number one, you know, number two, most people who use that phrase will will attach the, you know, you're free to leave, which is just even even a bigger joke because you're not free to leave. Uh, there's an exit tax you have to pay if you wanna if you wanna renounce your citizenship. And I believe earlier last year or in maybe the middle of last year they raised it. Like 20, so a lot for twenty five hundred dollars, I think. <laughs> Oh, oh, I think for most, I think there's exceptions, but for, but on the whole, yeah, it's, it's like 24, almost 22, $2,300 $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, or something. So, so that, that's not free, uh, you know, especially if you're somebody, you know, not somebody rich who's just trying to get out of, just trying to get out of here to, you know, dodge taxes and not pay their fair share. As it, most yeah, and it's think. different charges for renouncing and changing and uh, your citizenship, renouncing citizenship, changing citizenship, and then there's one more that you can do that's free, but uh, it essentially makes you an outlaw in the whole world. Yeah, like, well, do the U the UN came out with a law, the United Nations, which America is part of. You, they came out with a law that made it basically illegal to not be a citizen of a country. So that's another thing I tell people. I can't. I mean, you're asking me to trade one tax form for another. You know. Well, <coughs> That's what I was going to get to. That's what I was going to get to, you know. But you, you know. I'm it, sorry to steal your thunder, man. I apologize. <laughs> it's so, he it's stole all right. It. He stole it. That's it. I, I, you know, I. <laughs> We're I used to it by now, Dave. I, apo um, I apologize. You know, it just. Uh, it happens. You know, um, the, 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 uh, the monkey in the cage scenario is the best uh, phrase I've heard or the best analogy. You know, there's a monkey in, in a zoo and he's in this cramped cage. And. Uh, the zookeeper comes up and asks, you know, what's the problem? He said, well, this cage is too small. I, I wish to be set free. And he goes, okay, you can choose any other cage in the park. And, you know, that's what you're telling me when you say you, if you don't like it, you can leave. Mm -hmm. Well, you can go choose any other, because there's only like Antarctica and the middle of the ocean are the only two places not claimed by government. 
Actually, that's not true. I looked into that a, a while ago, and Antarctica actually is claimed <laughs> by a bunch of by a bunch of different countries. Um, have you have certain to, you have have to pay have taxes have, while you're on Antarctica. Well, I, I mean, who I would come down there to enforce it? <laughs> I, I, I think the only people that currently live there are like scientific expeditions and stuff. I don't think too many <laughs> yeah, people are actually so. living there at the moment. Um, but that. but that is that is the point. You know, you're free to leave. Okay, well, no, you have to pay an exit tax. Even if you find the loophole that you can get out for free, where are you going to go? Because it's just, as you said, you're just trading one. You know, you you jump, you're trading one cage for another. You know, and and the common argument to that will be. Well, then, if this is you know, um, you know, most people that that will throw that argument still believe that America is the freest country in the world, and they you know think that it's it's the best place to live, and you know they they they've never bothered to check any of the the freedom rankings or the economic rankings that have been coming out pretty consistently for the past what eight to ten years. Well, those people, are still people, freedom rankings according to status. I mean, it, 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 well, it, it, that's that's not the point. The point is, it's it's not as free as people think, and even if it was, there's more than enough for most people to complain about here. The only argument they could put up with is, well, if you don't want to go anywhere else, then stay here because this is the best. This is the best you can do. Yeah. It, that is that it, that, and they think that's a a winning argument. That's not an argument. Okay, the 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 cra- the the, be- the best crappy service you can receive is is all you can expect. No, you know we should strive for something better, which is it's you know a, then they'll it's the cleanest dirt, dirty dirty clothes in the hamper. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's the one. It's yeah. It's 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 the shirt that smells the least that you can get one more okay, wear out of. So if we're gonna wrap the show up, what's one thing you would say to maybe a limited government kind of guy that's kind of teeter-tottering towards, uh, you know, uh, voluntarism, uh, Danilo. You know, obey your conscience. You know, there is no such thing as law. Man-made law is arbitrary and has no bearing on your life, right? The only thing that's important is your own conscience. If, if what you're doing, if you feel what you're doing is wrong and you still do it, what does that say about your character, about your will? You know, you don't even trust yourself <laughs> and you trust a bunch of, uh, you know, guys with $5,000 suits on Capitol Hill who have never even met you or your family or your friends. And you trust them to dictate how you should live your life. Like, <laughs> what does that really say about your, you know, your independence and your, um, your yeah, the belief in yourself, you know? So <laughs> what, what, do you, what would you say, Jeremy? Um, somebody, well, if it's, if it's somebody on the national defense issue, which I, it seems to be the case for a lot of people, that's usually the last hang up. I know it was for me. Uh, I think I spoke previously about reading chaos theory by Robert Murphy, which has started me thinking, Hey, wait a minute, maybe this isn't such a crazy idea. Um, but anybody who's getting close or even considering this stuff, uh, I, I would honestly just tell them to really examine the negatives that you see personally. And, you know, instead of trying to say the good outweighs the bad, take a closer look at the negatives and, and see how horrible they really are. <laughs> it, it won't take much. You can, you know, do, do some quick Google searches and learn a lot. And then, you know, to tie it back into the, to the earlier part of the discussion, you know, th- think about realistically, do, do you own yourself? Do you understand what that means? Do you believe you do? Because as Dave said earlier, You know, a lot of people will try to tell you that they own themselves, but they don't, number one, understand really what that means. And number two, um, they don't understand that by consenting to the actions of a a forcible monopoly on 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 violence and and, and money printing and all the other stuff, wonderful stuff that government does by consenting to that. Uh, you are giving up ownership. You are giving up ownership to yourself. So you think about that. Do Do you really own yourself? If you do. Doesn't that mean that nobody has a a, a higher, uh, you know, queue? That nobody's higher in the queue to be able to make decisions for you? You know, only you can make the only you can make the best decisions for yourself, right? Okay, great. Now, if you've got that far, why can't you extend that to other people? Because if you can't extend it to other people, how should you expect other people to extend it to you? You know, that that's kind of how the whole thing that you know, self ownership. It, it's not just you own yourself, you know, and, and, and even the non-aggression principle, it's not just, you know, you don't, you know, you treat, exactly, you, don't, you treat people, you don't treat people the way you don't want to be treated, as Dave said earlier. Um, you, you don't do these things. 
So you have to, it, it's not just about you. You have to extend it to everybody else. And if, if, if you have hangups because you think government can only do certain things, well, take a real close look at the history of what they've done. And in most cases, they've made it exponentially worse. Um, and it's, it's not going to get better. You know, I made the vote harder joke earlier. It, it, it's not going to work that way. Uh, you can find out for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Keep looking into it. Um, but it's people just you really to let go. You ju all you really have to do is is understand that you you own yourself, and everything extends from that. And as long as you can extend that same courtesy, um, you know there, there's no need to have a, a centralized government telling, ordering people what to do, uh, letting the majority rule the minority over and over and over again, and just force their will on people. Um, cause it's, you know, the, the bad people exist now, the bad people will exist then nothing's going to change on that end, except there'll be more options, uh, to take care of all the bad people in all the situations because government disappears, the markets become free, uh, competition rages and people, you know, any bad scenario that the average, uh, government believer uh, could think of and throw up as an as in opposition to you when you bring these ideas to them. Every one of those things uh, can be handled uh, without government. They they don't need to be there. You you just you know if if it, if it, if a demand rises, uh, something will fill that void. It, it it happens all the when government gets out of the way, it happens every time. Now um, there's no reason to believe for any reason that it it won't happen in the future. Um, and that's it's 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 tough, you know. Like I said, especially if it's the national defense, I I understand that. But just ask yourself, why do you have to have one? Why can't you have multiple? And that that's really it. That's and anything you think government does, why why doesn't there have to, why does there have to be only one? <laughs> if I, you can get if you get over that, you can get over all of it. I agree, and yeah, um, I think uh, I'm going to end on a quote, and then Danilo can close the show out if he wants to. But uh, the, the quote is from Ayn Rand, and I, I like her a lot. She, she says a lot of right things, but she says a lot of wrong things too. But this, this, this quote is it's really, really good quote, and it's perfect. Um, it says, The precondition of a civilized society is the barring of physical force from social relationships. In a civilized society, force may only be used in retaliation and only against those who initiate its use. So that's essentially voluntarism in a nutshell. That phrase right there, you know, think about that a lot, guys. You know, think that, don't try to beat the argument. Say, oh, let's see how I can beat this and s prove the government's right. <laughs> just think about it. Just, just really let it set in. Think about it for weeks if it takes and really look at some things with a different light with a newfound uh you know with a newfound uh knowledge don't just mark it off as oh these guys are wackos or these guys are idiots like try to beat our argument and you'll find that you can't not to sound cocky but it's you're either an involuntarist or a voluntarist and there's the, it's that simple well said. You know, Jeremy, you reminded me when you said vote. You're talking about voting. I, I just saw a meme. It says, uh, it says, you can vote. If it makes you feel good, just vote. We'll, we're we're going to bribe the, the politicians to get what we want anyway. So <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think we touched on a topic that might be good to discuss in another uh, – in a future podcast, which would be um, – you know, you, you mentioned people, people exiting the country due to taxation, right? Going to tax haven, or ta tax havens, or you know, or, or less taxed regions, um, and then you know, sweatshops, and and that that's a great topic to talk about because people are always, you know, railing against sweatshops, you know, you know, exploitation, slavery, slave wages, right? So uh, I think that's an that's an awesome trigger, you know, uh, inflammatory topics to talk about. And I always love, you know, inflammatory topics. <laughs> I, I never shy away from them. So, <laughs> so very very cool uh, discussion. Um, this is the um, Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, thank th thank you everyone for listening. So we'll um, see you all next week. S
Plant seeds don't start fires. That's it. Peace. <laughs> Plant seeds. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.